Question is, who should it be? The leading contender right now, Amy Coney Barrett. Three words that strike fear under the heart of the liberals. Who is Amy Barrett? She's an appeals court judge. She's a mother of seven, five biological children, two adopted children from Haiti. She's a law professor, obviously qualified. We don't know much about her judicial philosophy, actually. We know she clerked for Scalia, but you know, she's young. She's been on the bench not too long. Still, the left hates her guts. Why? Two big reasons. First one, they hate her primarily because she's Catholic. Here is Senator Democrat Dianne Feinstein lambasting her because the Catholic dogma lives loudly within her. When you read your speeches, um, the conclusion one draws is that the dogma lives loudly within you. And that's of concern when you come to big issues that large numbers of people have fought for for years in this country. It's a big concern because Catholics aren't allowed on the Supreme Court because our Constitution establishes a religious test for president. And you need to belong to the religion of secular liberalism. You can't possibly be a Christian. That would be un American. <laughs> that's the argument she's making. Luckily, Dianne Feinstein is far too ignorant to know that that's the argument that she's making. But it's a deeply anti-American argument. The things she is saying right there violate the Constitution. Even asking those questions is a violation of the Constitution. Dick Durbin, another leading Democrat, a little bit quicker on his feet than Dianne Feinstein, falls into precisely the same trap. You use a term in that article, or you both use a term in that article I'd never seen before. You refer to Orthodox Catholics. What's an Orthodox Catholic? Um, as I recall, that term, um, we said something like, for lack of a better term, we're using the term Orthodox Catholic, and there was a long footnote saying, you know, that that was an imperfect term. Uh, it could, you know, refer to Orthodox Judaism, you know, Greek Orthodox. And so we kind of cast about, but what that term was designed to capture, because we were talking about conscientious objection, was a judge who... Um, accepted the church's teaching that the death penalty would be impermissible in that case. Do you consider yourself an Orthodox Catholic? I am a Catholic, Senator Durbin. I, I don't, well, Orthodox Catholic, we kind of, as I said, in that article, we just kind of use that as a proxy. It, it is not, to my knowledge, you know, a term currently in use, but if you're asking whether I take my faith seriously and I'm a faithful Catholic, I am, although I would stress that my personal church affiliation or my religious belief would not bear on the discharge of my duties as a judge. She gave a very long judicial sort of judicious answer here, but a simpler answer is, what do you mean you've never heard of Orthodox Catholic? Dick Durbin is not a stupid man. He says, I've never heard that Orthodox Catholic. Well, let me spell it out for you, Senator Durbin. Orthodox, meaning you actually believe the things that you say that you believe. Catholic, meaning you're a Catholic. You're, you're part of the Catholic Church. You could be a heterodox Catholic, meaning you consider yourself a Catholic, but you don't believe the things that the Catholic Church believes. You could be a heretic, a heretical Catholic. You could openly preach things against what the Catholic Church teaches, even though you consider yourself a Catholic. Or you can be an orthodox Catholic and actually believe the things that the Catholic Church teaches. And that's the issue here. Because when Democrats use the term Catholic, they say, I'm a devout Catholic. My Catholic faith is important to me. What they really mean is, I have Christmas dinner. I maybe go to mass sometimes if I want to. That's what they mean. I, Joe Biden's a devout Catholic. He thinks that taxpayers should, should pay to kill babies in the womb up until the moment of birth, but he's a, which, which Catholics are not permitted to believe. But, you know, he's a devout Catholic. Some Democrats say, yeah, I, I support socialism, but I'm a devout Catholic. You're not allowed to be a socialist if you're a Catholic. So what they mean by devout Catholic is they think that religion is this kind of little ornament and it's this sweet little thing that maybe you do in the privacy of your own home because you're afraid of the dark and it's a little superstition like knocking on wood or, or any other superstition. But you don't take it seriously. You don't think it means anything. You certainly don't believe all that crazy stuff that those churches say. And the Democrats are shocked to find a woman who is intelligent, who is articulate, who is accomplished, who actually thinks it's true. And now, there are a lot of Catholics and, and, and Christians and people 
who think this way, but the Democrats don't meet them. They're always shocked. They, they say, you know, you couldn't possibly believe that stuff. So that's the first reason they hate her. Second reason they hate her is because she disproves all their stupid theories about how women are supposed to be. On paper, she is everything a woman should be or could be. The left always says women can have it all, right? And usually what that means is that women should go and delay getting married and delay having children and just work for the widget factory. And, you know, they should go cut their hair and they should go only vote for Democrats and they should have lots of abortions and they should, uh, I don't know, what are all the things? I'm trying to mix the high and the low. You know, you should get like stupid, like really like ugly haircuts. Like, do you remember that thing that the Democrats were doing years ago? The feminist women were doing, it's like, it was very un- unpleasant. And the very important things, like they should engage in abortion or they should form families in a certain way or this or that or this or that. That's what the Democrats say. You can, you can have it all. That's the promise that you can have a career, have a family, have kids, do all these things you want. Usually it doesn't work out that way. So you have to fall into one, one camp or the other. But for Amy Barrett, it did work out that way. She had five biological kids. She then adopted two children from Haiti. They'll find some way to call her a racist, I'm sure. She found a way to have this incredibly successful legal career. And yet, they still hate her. How do they hate her? She did what most of them never could do. She had it all. Well, it's because she doesn't think the way that they do. New York Times runs a piece. Two conservatives. Barrett has perfect combination of attributes for the Supreme Court. Maybe that's true for conservatives, but actually it's more true for liberals. The headline should read, to liberals, Barrett has the perfect combination of attributes for the Supreme Court. She's a woman, and they think that a woman needs to replace Ruth Ginsburg. She has it all. She has had this great career, but she hasn't had to sacrifice in her personal life, or not at least that we can see. She checks all of these kind of boxes, right? I don't care that Amy Barrett's a woman. I don't think a woman needs to replace RBG on the Supreme Court. I don't think a woman needs to have it all, you know, needs to have this very intense career and have a total family life. I don't, I don't think you have to do that, but they do. And she did it, but she doesn't think the way that they think. So now all of a sudden they hate her. They're going to try to kick her out. Uh, We absolutely should push her through. If for no other reason than to trigger the libs, it'll be very, very funny. Uh, also, the reason we need to push her through, I think we should all get on board. If, if it's her, it might be, so, there are a couple other people who are being talked about. She's the leading contender right now. But the reason we need to pu- push through this nominee, if the nominee is in any way acceptable to conservatives, is because we're in a bare knuckle moment of politics right now. We're not in a nice deliberative moment of politics where all these judicial nominees get unanimously confirmed. That's gone. And the Democrats ruin that. And so we've got to play. We've got to participate in the politics that we actually have. This is bare knuckle stuff. I hope you enjoyed that short segment from the Michael Knowles show. Be sure to check out the full episode linked in the description or download the podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. 